G'day YouTube, Jamie from Oz here. So it's been a little while since I've had a, uh, a workshop update. It's been a bit of a busy couple of weeks, months, I suppose you could say. But I just thought I'd say hello now that the uh, Barsi Summer Bash has run and won. Um, I ended up with my little piece of loot, which was a Keith Fenner scraper for uh, cleaning out the keyways on my... Um, on my mill, so I'm very happy with that. On to further things. I was asking a question recently as to what people are using for no spill cups for various kinds of coctures and tinctures and that sort of stuff. I managed to get some of the RTD metal cutting compound uh, on Bruce's recommendation, the black smelly smoky stuff he calls it. And I was wanting to put it in a container that was no spill and I'll expect to probably put some neodymium magnets on the bottom so that I can stick those in places. Of course, I was struggling to find those anywhere and eventually ended them down at the local $2 shop and they had them there, so that was pretty cool. Next, I was trying to source some acid brushes. Can't go past eBay, it was $8 for 30. So I've now got some acid brushes to allow me to do that sort of stuff a bit easier. Onwards and upwards. I had some issues, and let me put those over there for a minute. As you probably saw if you've watched my entry into Emma's competition, I had some issues parting, and the issues haven't gone away. In fact, they've only gotten worse. Um, I think in my very first attempt, I managed to booger up this holder. So now there isn't really any good support underneath the tip. So whenever a cut is taken, it's going to vibrate and break. So I've, I've probably, I think, terminally damaged this 12E, 12-12 insert cutting tool. No great loss, other than it leaves me without a cutting, an insert, sorry. No great loss, other than it leaves me without a parting off tool. Um, but yeah, I have a lot to learn there. I was, I was managing to booger up one end snapping the end off which meant I couldn't use the other end because the way the insert holder works it needs the back to hold it in place so I was going through inserts at a rate of knots so that was another thing that happened I also needed to find to complement the boring head that I purchased a while back Again, Chinesium. Um, I hadn't, to date, had any capability to uh, run boring bars on these. I didn't have any boring bars. So I jumped onto the Banggood site and had a quick look at their offering. And for reasonable money, I mean, it is what it is, I was able to find myself some... I haven't actually checked if they fit. Yeah, they fit. Cool. Some 12 millimeter boring bars, um, which means I can now make use of this boring head. Um, obviously the caveat with these um, boring tools is that you do need to do a recut. The, the back relief and the face relief straight out of the box isn't going to be enough to allow you to get negative rake on your, um, your cut without rubbing on the back face. So. Simon, I think in the UK, has a couple of tutorials. I'll give a link up here to a tutorial on, on what you can do with these if you get them. But also, uh, I posted up on the YouTube group, but I thought I'd share that with you guys here. The uh, high quality packing. I think they call this the universal mount. So you've got the, the packing for 12 or 9 tools and they just plug it with dowels depending on whether you want the 12 tool version or the 9 tool version. I of course went with the 9 tool version so they uh, dutifully filled up with this uh, invisible repair so that you would never know that it was previously drilled for 12. And that's the kind of skill I really want to learn as a machinist is how to do that kind of invisible repair because we all know mistakes happen. There's 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 the good days that we have and everything goes right and we want it all to be fantastic and then something just goes wrong 
And the measure of the man isn't what really happens when everything's going well, but what happens when things go a bit pear-shaped. So it's one of those skills that I really want to pick up before I finish my time as an apprentice. But here you go, that's a lovely stand, complete with interchangeable 9 and 12 tool holding capability, straight from Banggood. Um, yeah, your mileage may vary, but that's what I ended up with. Paid full price for these, all $10, or $20 or something. Anyway. Precision, boring bar set. Ah, they probably read 12 by nine and thought it was nine by 12. That, that explains it. So, boring head, I'll get a chance to use that one day soon. Alongside getting some extra cutters for the parting tool, I also need to get some extra inserts for the other set of free tooling that I've purchased. So I've ended investing in a, a slight assortment of various inserts and I've kept the product sheets to try to determine which of any of these are useful. I think one of them is a stainless steel insert, the other one is for cardboard. Um, I think there's even a plant-based material one but it's, it's good for plants. So I'll just have to label those accordingly when I put them away. Make sure I'm using the right insert for the job. Also, I finished my entry for Emma's competition and I had my five eight, no, three eighth Sutton two fluid end mill in the uh, the wrong foo and few too few hands. The issue I had is that my drawbar is not suited for my 12mm M12 MT3 inserts. So I didn't actually have the drawbar in there when I had to release it and stupid me, I left the cutter in the ER32 head and of course that came down and smashed it. So I'm gonna have to learn how to sharpen a two flute cutter very shortly. Um, another skill I've been wanting to learn. So that's fucking awesome. As a result of that, I jumped on the cheap, cheap site and grabbed a selection of end mills so that I've got a, a, at least some sort of cutters on site that I can, these are all four flutes of a range of sizes from quarter inch up to half inch, five eighths and so on and so forth. Yes. now. That's all fun, but what I really, really, really want to show you is something that came out of last year's bash. A guy called Paul Boulay in the States. He demonstrated a set of toe clamps that he made. And knowing that I'd need some at some point to actually hold down some stuff, I uh, was quick enough and fortunate enough to get my name on the list. And they arrived last month. And this, I've sent some photos to Instagram and to my Facebook page. But essentially, I'll add the photo here so you can see the full set. There's a set of dowel pins. These are set up to suit the um, Saunders Machine Works mini pallet. So there's all dowels and quarter twenties um, set up to hold various bits. And then a range of press feet and extensions and check out some of these. I'll show photos of these as well. Just brass standoffs, springs, assemblies. Lovely label for the strap clamp kit, so we'll make up a nice box for this. I elected to have uh, my set sent without a box just to save on shipping. Um, and then here we go, here's the actual toe clamp set. 
that came out with my set as well and just really nice a lot of people have commented, yeah, they can make their own and stuff, but just the attention to detail, the chamfering, it's all just so nice and even. He's just really done an amazing job with getting these just looking real swish. So it's something that I'm going to enjoy using, um, something that I've enjoyed being a part of helping somebody else to get a project together to use their machine, um, and something that I think, uh, yeah, just deserves to be enjoyed. Regardless of whether or not I could have made it myself, I think it's important to recognise that people are out there doing great stuff and supporting that. So, thanks very much, Paul. P.R. Boulay, B-O-U-L-A-Y, at yahoo.com. So, that was another very much appreciated outcome this month. What else have we got? Um... A couple of the guys that asked me to do a bit of a walk through my toolbox. So let's have a look at that now. Now I've spent years doing all sorts of stuff. And most recently, um, let me go around the corner. I started to get my workshop organized. There's still a big pile of junk over here, which isn't as big as it looks. And obviously as we come around the corner to my little corner of happiness, I've had the opportunity to start cleaning up and collecting all my various tools. So, in no particular order, top toolbox, this is where I've got things like various meters, soldering irons, blood pressure gauge for when the uh, temperature gets a bit hot, got uh, test meters for testing land cables, laser levels, all kinds of fun and, fun and doodle stuff. Uh, some empty drawers, always a nice thing to have in the workshop when you're cleaning up because it gives you somewhere to put extra stuff. A drawer for sockets, torques and hex, um, and also Teng tools. Really dig my Teng tools. I did my time with those when we were doing junior motocross. I was on the service team for a mate's son who was racing junior motocross. And you're talking wet, muddy, Heat, cold, locked up, everything. We never managed to break a 10 tool. So I really always enjoyed those. Next drawers, just a range of things. That's my trusty go-to file. Lots of little jewelers files and that sort of stuff. All pretty ordinary tools there, nothing fancy. Some various blades for various other sort of tools. Screwdrivers. Rationalise the screwdrivers down a bit, some electrically insulated sets, some handy grip, and uh, some special tools. This is a T8, I think it is, for opening up the Mac of, back of a MacBook. Uh, sorry, not a MacBook, a Macintosh Plus. Really early old ones. Ceramic screwdriver for trim pots, that sort of stuff. I managed to pull out those screwdrivers there, which are all the junk ones left that I didn't want to keep, so. Um, Knocking sticks. I've actually got somewhere for knocking sticks to go back. Thor number three. Now I had a trusty Thor number four. I have no idea where it ended up. Troy, Troy, Troy M. Hello, Troy. Yes, this is your number three. I still owe you what I owe you for that. So we'll get that sorted somewhere. A bit of a dead blow hammer. Um, Chippy's hammer so you can smack yourself in the skull. Engineer's hammers few body beating dollies and hammers and stuff. Nothing too flash there. Ah, I don't even want to go in there. All kinds of legacy stuff. Anyway, we'll leave that for another day. Um, close to hand, hexes, lubricants, some stones, including a knife sharpening stone set, quite handy. Um, it does tend to wear down pretty quick. A box of uh, blue Sharpies, ER40 collet block that I got from MagPro. Pens, exhaust sealants, various other things, JB Weld, black seal, and a light, um, and some various tapes and whatnot. Twisted fire starter. This is my little um, flint. 
few other tips and grinding tools and some carbide things there. Various other uh, burrs and whatnot. This sort of thing for when we're working on aluminium. One day soon, hope to get playing with some of this. Uh, diamond tools, always handy to have diamond hole cutters. Scotch Bright and epoxies and glues and whatnot. Random electrical stuff, including a GPS Bluetooth unit. Back some uh, RJ45s. Assorted random shit. Crimping tools, various other things. Love the ratchet crimpers. Um, only way to do a crimp is to have a ratchet crimping. Anything else you're doing is a waste of effort and time. If you're crimping, don't solder. If you're soldering, don't crimp. Various picks, hook sets, magnets. We all need to have six or seven magnets. Tweezers to pull that bit of metal out of your eye. Um, a couple of deburring tools. And of course, your uh, handy dandy mirror. Flyers and snips, somewhere for those like to go. These ones are quite decent uh, snips, but somewhere to go. Of course, the knife hex. I got these ones to do an O-ring, no, the circlet on the lathe that I just couldn't get to with anything else. I was cobbling around with all sorts of stuff. You need the right tool, go and buy it, put it in your toolbox, you'll never forget it. Laser, um, various other things for the laser cutter, the yellow box over there. So I've got exchange mirrors, exchange lenses, various other fittings and fixtures. And now that I've got a lathe, I can actually do what I was planning to do with this, which is set up a range of noses for swapping in the lenses, different focal lengths. So you have like 40, 50, 65, 85, something like that, which affect the shape of the laser as it comes through the materials. Very handy, wasn't able to change them out. And that was the warranty laser tube that I had, that I had to smash, broke my heart. Smashed a really nice piece of glass, get a warranty claim. Metrology draw. Now, some of you will have seen the one and two inch Mitotoyos. Um, I did a repair on this particular unit. I had an error 05 on the Mitotoyo, which I subsequently was able to fix very happily. Uh, some little babies, more and right, one inch. That's a present from the old man. And one to two inch, more and right again, with the standard in it. Some Chinese stuff at the back there. My trusty vernier calipers. That one there have seen me about the last 30 years. And they've been pretty much on every job I've done. My mate Dave Cooper is no longer really in the game. This was a set that he gave to me. Um, oh, here's an interesting one. Ah, <laughs> what's in your box? 2016. This was one of the runner-up prizes. This is a chip removing tool that came from one of the guys who was making up sample pack add-ins. Uh, and that's the other mic that came through with the What's In Your Box 2016 runner-up. Enox, made in USA. A um, couple of small squares. Some Mitotoyo gauges. I managed to get a big pile of those. Starrett, last word, indicator, 196. Back face. Uh, batteries, need batteries for things. Fowler verdict. This one is a five tenths. Each each indicated dial is half half a thou. So ten thou total range. Got a video and pulling that down and getting that fixed because that was also not working. This one here needs a bit of work. It's a bit gummy. It is a. Dial. Switzerland compact. Comp. Anyway, one of them. It's uh yeah, definitely seen better days. Very gummy, but that'll clean up. And this one is my most. Hmm, I, I don't know if you'd say most accurate but hopefully most accurate. And this one measures down to two thousandths of a millimetre on each division. 
So that's my, my finest test indicator. Show here out of China. Um, okay, I've got a set of adjustable parallels, uh, including a second piece that I got a replacement from Mag Pro because the screws on this one actually broke off, didn't work. So I've got two of that one and then one each of the rest of those. Uh, just jam it in, you reckon? Not really the ideal way to handle it. You'll find the packaging. Let's make some space over here. This was a product that I worked on back when I was uh, working at Sun Industries. And basically there's this cam that you set to your rise and run. And depending on what rise and run you want, the cam sets the distance so that your level reads flat when you have that grade. And then also degrees, fine degrees and different grades on that side. Made in Australia by Douse Plumbing Products. It was a really quite a cool product, tested by the university and everything. Do you say university tested and it gives you that air of quality or something? I don't know. Assorted car bits, um, cam bearing tools, big, uh, I think that's the cam nut off an Austin Healy spray, timing lights, all the usual sort of bits and pieces. Uh, you need to get oil out of a sump. Using a syringe is a really good way of actually removing oil from somewhere that you can't drain out of. And I use that with the Zocker 500 at Bruce's. Uh, brake line and uh, fuel line bending tool. Various other sump plug, drain plug angles. Uh, drawer full of spanners, including the obligatory set of open enders. I don't really have enough spanners at the moment, and especially in the smaller sizes, I don't have a decent set. Most of the stuff I've got is pretty fat, so uh, some brake line, flare nut sort of stuff. Cutting. All right, so refills for deburring, various other inserts, some stack of carbide that I picked up from a local supplier, various other turning tools out of the set of nine, deburring tool. Uh, Morse 3 um, rapid and finishing taper cutters and some tool steel. Um, what's this? Oh, of course, this is how everybody should pack their rings is together in a box, shaping around. So these are probably all blunt. Um, we shall see. And a little end mill, uh, center drill. Moving on, random bits and pieces. Uh, BA tap and die set. A angle protractor, complete with vernier. So there's a number of different ways to read that, but it reads down to two minutes. Two minutes? Two minutes to set angles. Um, one day I hope to pull that out and actually do some useful work with it. Um, these are a set of 5 8 insert tooling, including one I managed to break the other day. And yes, I managed to order some replacement inserts, so I've got a set of inserts for these still already. Um, just to try and get a bit more rigid on the, uh, on the lathe some information bits, various other bits and pieces from the 3D printing. Um, so forth. Next drawer, uh, welding stuff. So all different inserts, cups, temperature sticks. Yeah. All set up my water cool torch and various other things, collets, tungstens. Got an on-off switch and also a rotary switch on my water torch. So one day that'll be pulled out. Next draw, of course, the obligatory machinery's handbook. Don't want that getting buggered up. Sorry, guys. Nice little vice that I picked up. Needs a little bit of work. 
machine level. Who is this? This is. Can't even read it. Rayburn. Sons. Machine level. All of the stickers that I've got from all of you guys over all of the time waiting to go up somewhere in the shop, so I'll have to find a spot to put all that in. Uh, Precision Square, another one. Various other bits. What's that one? I think that's stoppers. Oh no, this is the Roots steam engine that I started to make as a 3D printed. For the pattern files for this are up on Thingiverse. Um, yeah, one day I'll make that out of metal and uh, should be lovely. One of my first steam engines, maybe. Tossing between that and some Atkinson cycle engines and various other sort of calipers and whatnot. Ah, there's those threading charts people kept on saying. I think this, uh, R. Stephen Lang sent me some of these, which was awesome, and also some from Keith's. Uh, what's in your box 2016 runner-up JB from Oz scraper gauge how's that this is a um, product of mine that I've got listed on Etsy you've got the one square inch center so measure your contact points and you've got a guide to sharpen the edge of your scraper to the various you've got R90 R40 R60 and R15 115 so those different angles allow you to set up your scraper to suit various um, finishings you're wanting to do. So the, this really wide radius is for your initial cuts and then your little deep points when you start getting into your fine detail work. The radiuses are set up based on some information from Steph and Goddess Winter, so I'm expecting they should be useful for people. But they are available on Etsy. If you feel like one of those, I can make one up. They're laser cut and then uh, ship to you. Next drawer, range of tools. We've got a reversing tapping die, MT3, that's up to 20 mil, I think. 3 8 to 3 quarter inch capacity. A little 30X Tapmatic unit, which is down to M7 down to number zero. M1.5 to M7, number zero to quarter inch. Um, set of 5C collets, ER32, uh, MT3, that's for the mill, boring head. This is a tail stock, I think, with the tank. And then I've got another one which is for the mill, which is a, a drawbar. Here, this chuck. This one here is a 480 mil by 27 facing cutter. Again, MT3. And. We have here my little precision vise, which one day hopefully I'll get to make use of as well. Uh, I haven't checked it for square or true or anything like that, so exactly as it's come. So no doubt it'll need a bit of finessing or finagling or something. Next draw, more setup. What have we got here? Okay, so um, a couple of digital calipers, that one's electric height gauge, it's also got a carbide tip for marking out and that goes from zero through to six inches, that's the carbide tip for it, so we can reach, reach down, 12 inch straight edge, ER32, 12 sided block, um, angle plate, some little V blocks. Yeah, can't get that with one hand. Anyway, what they are? V blocks. Oh dear. There we go. One, two, three blocks. Got a couple of packs of those. One, two. Some dead blow hammers I picked up cheap from the local supply. 
this is a scraped surface. Now, I don't know how accurate the scraped surface is, but I've picked this up in a little scrounge. Come on. This up and looking at the watermarking on it, I'm going to have to do something with it, but it might be my first scraping project. What do you reckon? Nice piece of cast iron. A couple of little jigs for uh, soldering connectors and stuff, RC. Little granite surface plate down there. And dial indicators. I'm not getting a couple of these for 10 bucks each. Nice and cheap. And what else? Oh yeah, metal dial calipers and a depth gauge. And final draw. More tang, more tang, diamond cutters, set of road brochures. Symmetric and Imperial. And then DeWalt's all up the wazoo over there. So everything in those cupboards is just alongside the mill, the lathe, and the table. So the thought is, the hope is, that becomes a really useful local workplace. Um, as far as chucks, I've got a stack of chucks down here. This is a protractor angle starret set compound, which is lovely. The um, not L zero D one four Pratt Bernard multi size collet over there, and all the collets for it. Pratt Bernard three jaw five C collet chuck face plate. All the DRO stuff, the yeah, R32 faceplate, telescoping gauges, downhole ball gauges, 5 to 10 millimeters in 0 0.02 millimeter, little rotary table. Yeah, bit of stock, bit of fiddle stuff, piles and piles of junk. Yeah. So, my next hunt is for more of these. I need to get myself some tool holders. Um, Cam at Battler obviously showed us a great project there making those and really keen to look at how I might do those, whether I'm do them on the shaker or he obviously used a vertical slotter to cut these slots. But we'll figure something out. Anyway, that's the game. Best of luck to everybody on their way back from the bash. Hope you all arrive safe and um, look out for the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Man, I can't believe it was two years ago and Keith Fenner put his what you, What's In Your Box competition 2016 up. Thought, you know what, I'm gonna give this a go. And what I wanted out of that competition wasn't to win a box. It was to take that leap and get out into the community and actually become a part of it. And today, um, blow away absolute blow away it looks like i'm going to finally pass my 1000 subscriber mark on youtube i wouldn't have done it without you keith and without all of my subscribers people have been there from day one like john creasy i mean come on how can you beat that he he saw me coming from a mile away and he didn't run um so many fabulous people out there that i can thank um gotta like bruce with them and Keith Fenner, obviously, has been a part of it. Stefan Godeswinter, who's helped me out with my Emma's Spare Room Machine Shop competition entry for 2017, where I did a set of gear cutting attachments for the Shaper. Uh, Robin Renzetti, just an absolute inspiration. People like Dan Gelbar, who isn't really very productive, but what an amazing set of videos that is. All the other fun and amazing people I've met along the way. Uh, the Shed, Greg, we bought our first Shaper from Greg. And um, look, I'm going to run out of names and I'm going to upset people, I'm sure. Uh, guys like Dan Dobbs, some of the guys that have been there from day one, no way jerk. Um, just names that are just always there and always seen. And I really appreciate it that you've been there all the way along. Guys like Brian BR Blocko too, who uh, he just gives you that kick up the ass to say, well, far, if Brian can do it, what am I doing sitting on my ass, you know? Um, yeah, 
the YouTube Machinist Group. What a bunch of people, 6,000 people or so today. Um, it looks like John Creasy's managed to rabble, raise the rabble and, and get me over the line. Uh, Chris Anderson, Randy Richards, uh, Ox Tools, Tom Lipton, Ad Abom, Adam79, uh, John Saunders. I mean, what, a, what an inspiration that guy is, starting from his basement and he's now out in the middle of massive shop teaching people how to do CNC work with crazy five axis machines, all sorts of stuff. Just on you go. My father, Mel Wilson, who this year added an entry into Emma's competition and has released his first video. On you, Dad. He's just about due to retire and hopefully he makes a really good go of it. Um, Ed Sobolewski from uh, Precision Machine Works. Young bloke who's just so keen and friendly and helpful and uh, on you go. Adam Carmichael, you know, you know who you are. Troy, I probably mentioned you before. Maybe I forget you, maybe I'll mention you again, eh? Uh, Gert van der Moe, um, just the list go on and on. Hal Pickering, um, great guy over in the east of, eastern states of Australia there. Uh, look, I'm, I'm really going to start to upset people if I don't remember names now, but my memory is not really... Uh, you know who you are. I apologise for not mentioning you by name. And uh, look, thank you so much for being here for this such a milestone event today of a uh, thousand subscribers and uh, hopefully i get another thousand and another thousand after that and it's only going to happen if i make stuff that's interesting so if there's things you want to see things you uh, don't want to see just let me know thanks guys um ask Stephen lang uh steve from ah uh, come on the name eludes me shark not shark river machine that's Stephen lang uh solid rock machine Stan, Stan Bozinkowski from Barzi. How could I forget you, mate? I uh, can't forget you. Uh, names, names. Yeah, all the rest. Love you heaps, guys. Thank you so much for uh, being a part of it, and I hope you're there for a while longer. Cheers. Uh, well, one name, of course, that very sadly, uh, Bill Leitner. We, we saw Bill as a member of our YouTube community, doing some really amazing work and unfortunate news today came through uh, of his passing and I guess without wanting to finish on a sad note um, Bill you'll be forever in our heads and in our minds and our hearts and we hope if there's anything your family need that we can reach out and help them um, yeah too soon buddy who's going to build your folio clock now too soon. Thanks guys.